Combined. So I was just about to record, but then I realized I need some energy. So first, let's do some pups, and then let's hit. Think I might just make myself a little smoothie. What's up everybody, my name is Danilo and my channel is all about sharing ways to be more efficient and to save time. Time is important. So without further ado, let's go straight into our topic, which is this camera hack. If you have a flip screen on any of your cameras, just stop everything, just do this. Trust me. So if you're doing YouTube videos or vlogging, you really want a flip screen. I love my flip screens because they're so practical. Like a flip screen is money. My Sony a7R 3 has a screen screen. I had a 60 Mark II that had one. And now the EOS R that I'm filming right now, which I didn't hack yet. So we're going to do that today. There's always my Canon 5D Mark IV sitting in a shelf somewhere collecting dust. It's a great camera, but it doesn't have a flip screen, which is why I got this thing. So let's get the EOS R hacked up. What are we talking about here? Well, if you have a flip screen, it takes a little bit of finesse. If you're in a hurry, you have to go like this. So it's doable, but you have to put quite a bit of force and pressure on the camera just to pop it out. You have to readjust it after. But then with this trick, watch the efficiency increase. Boom. All right, but what does this mean practically? Let's see. Oh, so this is where it matters. Imagine you're shooting in winter, trying to fumble around with your fingers. It's pretty damn cold in winter. Respect for you if you do that, but if you just have this hack, so much easier to use this with gloves. All right, let's see if I could do this. Definitely doable, but it's much faster to just go like this without even looking. Which brings me to a really good point, which is that making some little things like this just super efficient and super easy just invites me to be more creative and invites me to grab shots quicker. Well, let's do this in real time. So you're walking, mind your own business, pick up the camera, boom, and start start recording some B-roll like a boss. Approve memos! Watch this, you just plop it up and ready to go. Bam, got the shot. Literally took two seconds. So we'll basically be doing a modified KC Nicet hack, but with gaffer tape. So it's very easy. You just gotta put gaffer tape right here for this camera. I like to put it at the bottom for my A7R3. Super simple, super cheap, boom. Yeah. This bad boy's ready, but my EOS R doesn't, so let's just do that right now. So that's why my EOS R, so usually this is how you do it, and you flip. So we're gonna make that faster. We got gaffer tape and the ESR. But you'll see that it might actually stop the access to the buttons. Restart. At the bottom there would be a nice place to put it. I don't want to block any of these buttons and that flip through. But this is actually quite small. And around. And there you go. And voila, now it's super easy to grab the screen. All right, let's see practically if this works. Yeah. Works good. This is why I love this camera more. I don't know if I'm in frame or not, but I hope I am. In general, my philosophy is I like to set up my stuff so that I could do things blindfolded. If I could do it blindfolded, it's good. So like this. The simple things in life that give me joy. Because usually you have to go like this. And then you have to remember which way does the screen turn. It's like two motions, man. We just want one. But this way, it's always the right way up. Boom. And then you go up. 
Bam. Love it. So if you don't have a flip screen, I got a hack for you too. When I bought my A7R 3 which ain't cheap, I always like to resell my cameras and gear and lenses at the best price possible. And to do that, what I did is just put some gaffer tape at the bottom, the areas that usually get damaged. So usually that's what's gonna get scratched the most or on the edges. If I didn't have gaffer tape, this would be much, much bigger. And all this thing underneath would be like all scratched up. But because of the gaffer tape, it keeps its original state. As a side benefit, when I put on the plate for the tripod, because gaffer tape has texture, so the tripod plate actually grips better with the gaffer tape at the bottom. Little sprinkles of gaffer tape advantages. Second thing I did is to customize it in some way and to put my name on it so I know it's mine. Very important. I put my name in it because it's always good to have your name on it in case you forget your camera somewhere. It's like that one time where I forgot this lens. I had a wedding in the church. So I came back and I found it. But if I did have a label, they would just call me and know whose it is. Much better. So I actually got this label maker on Kijiji. Kind of like a Craigslist best 20 bucks spent ever. Then you get really addicted to like making labels for everything. But that's a whole other video. It also helps to differentiate between different people's cameras or if you have multiple cameras. So I have three cameras and they kind of look similar. So I put little dots, the dot. So I put a different color sticker on the 5D Mark IV. They each had a different color sticker. The labels are very cheap. They have them at Dollarama. Dots, there's these guys, all sorts of stuff. Just by looking at it, I knew which camera it was. Any event where there's a lot of photographers, then you know which camera is yours really easily. So I'll probably do another video just about gaffer tape. All the glorious ways you could use gaffer tape. But I have to get back to work on my reel. Best of reel for videography is going to be on YouTube as well. Check that out. I'll be posting more videos about studio management, office gear, all that kind of fun stuff on my channel. Subscribe if you want more info. And got to be more efficient, save time, and have more time. That's what it's all about around here. So this was jolly good fun. See you next time.